part of me had this instinct to be like, get, get off my mum. Punch all those police officers and like, why are you touching my mum for? This is a deadly device that they want to inject into you on the back of a pandemic. My mum was one of the UK's biggest conspiracy theorists. Choose your side! Choose your side! Every injection that goes in, it's a little bit of Satan. Yeah. Even if she's your mum, there's certain things you can do that are so terrible or so damaging to society. The doctors and nurses stood trial! very weird when somebody loses their mind rather than their life. It's really confusing. My name is Sebastian Shamarani. I'm 23 years old. I live in Hong Kong. I grew up in the UK with my mum, who is the UK's biggest COVID conspiracy theorist. No vaccine's ever been proven safe and no vaccine has ever been proven effective. We know that's not true. Please allow me to answer questions. Millions your question. and millions of lives have been saved by vaccines. Simply They're some not of the true. safest. Every conspiracy theorist leader has a different specialism. My mum's specialism is medicine. The catalyst for my mum was she was diagnosed with breast cancer. I decided to decline chemotherapy, tamoxifen, uh, Zolidex and radiotherapy, and I chose natural therapies. Anything where it was her versus the mainstream, in her mind, she was correct because she'd cured herself before. So it was the middle of lockdown, I guess it was around May, and my brother texts me and he said, look at what our mum's done. So I go on YouTube and I see these amazing videos about vaccines. It is about rolling out this new experimental bioweapon device. My flatmate who was from mainland China, comes over and shows me a Chinese newspaper article. On the other side of the planet, another civilization is commentating on my mum's buffoonery. It was funny until it wasn't, and I realized that there was a lot of momentum there. I grew up in East Sussex. My dad worked in London. My mum was doing various part-time jobs, one of which was being a nurse. Around the time of 10, 11 years old is when my upbringing went from pretty normal middle class to having a lot of unusual ideas being thrown at me as well. My dad first got into conspiracy theories around 9-11. He originally introduced my mum to low-level conspiracy theories. From that, around 2012, the conspiracy theories went from being political to being quasi-religious, eventually cult-like. They can put thoughts in your head. They can pick up on your brain waves and they can actually see what you're thinking. In part of this worldview, it was evil lizard people are trying to kill us all. As a child, I grew up with this fear that one day the men in black were gonna bust through my door and take us all away to some concentration camp because we were political enemies of the state. Uh, I was terrified. My mum raised me telling me that I was the Messiah and her having given birth to the Messiah. It creates a huge sense of, of ego. It took a lot of unpacking. I don't feel like I'm completely over that Messiah complex. And it's a constant battle. I started having the inkling that some of the lizard people stuff wasn't true. When I went to Eton for my A-levels, at the same time as my mum was telling me Eton was where all of these shadowy elites had their kids trained to become the next mass murdering, genocidal Bill Gates maniacs. She was bragging to all of her friends that I went there. That is how you maximize the amount of social clout you're getting in the southeast of the UK, or at least in her circle. I would come home from boarding school on the weekends where she'd immediately start talking about groundbreaking stuff that she was quote unquote learning. And I would question her on those points that she'd bring up. And that was when she started really flipping out. She turned to me with these evil eyes and she goes, they've brainwashed you. So that was the beginning of the end of me buying anything she says. Every time I would question her, the conversations would get more aggressive. I think sometime I was like 17, I just stopped going home. My mum started off going on the local radio station. And then when COVID kicked off, she repurposed and made social media a bigger part of her market offering. Her initial COVID theories were COVID doesn't exist. COVID does exist, but it's not harmful. 
COVID does exist and it is slightly harmful, but it's not that harmful and masks don't help. And also something about 5G towers causing people to drop dead across the UK. The city of Wuhan was the test city to have 5G rolled out. Her vaccine theories are not subtle. Yes, it's that serious. These are death shots. One of the enzymes in the vaccine apparently is called luciferase. I text my mum and I said I've got the first dose of the vaccine. Put your money where your mouth is. If I'm still walking in three months, what will you say? She doesn't respond to those text messages. She just says that I'm brainwashed. Around the height of her fame, at rallies at Trafalgar Square, online, etc., she would say hospitals were concentration camps. She called for nurses and doctors to be hanged after what she called a Nuremberg trial. The doctors and nurses stood trial, and they hung! A close childhood friend of mine died of COVID complications. It annoyed me that my mum, she's saying that COVID doesn't exist. This is all a lie, it's COVID-19. So I sent my mum a text saying, if there is a hell, I hope you burn there. She was married to an Iranian man for 20 years. All of her kids are half English, half Iranian. And she's standing literally shoulder to shoulder with these far right guys. Like, this woman's name is Kate Shemirani. But yeah, that really annoyed me. Um, annoyed is not the right word, it fucking disgusted me. I did an interview with the BBC, and about two weeks after that, she got deplatformed from everything. That was around October or November 2020. She sent me long, angry text messages saying that I had betrayed her and I was going to pay for it, and I was brainwashed. One of the things she will guilt trip you on is the idea of betrayal. She will often say things like, how can you say that about your own mother? So that, that was her immediate reaction, was trying to use the same tactics that she controlled me with when I was younger on me as a then 21 year old. I have 10K or so Twitter followers. They'll message me and talk to me about family members that they've got and they want advice. And they also flagged me the accounts that my mum's made and then we report them together. And I try and cleanse Twitter from my mum's antics occasionally. One of my followers just last week flagged this account to me. I've already reported this account. My mum has tweeted a video of what she says by her own admission is the video that made her a household name. It's Kate Shimirani. Morning, Kate. Good morning, Tony. How are you? I'm, v I'm very well. Do you know what? That's actually pretty sad because I guess somewhere inside her head when all this stuff kicked off, she thought, like, this is my big moment. And even though she was motivated for the wrong reasons, she's still excited. She thought she was going to make it. And seeing her, like, smile before she goes on the radio, Oh, that's just really, that really, that's actually fucking sad. Um, I, like, there were, there were really happy moments in my childhood, some parts, you know, parts in a sea of misery, but still parts. You can't get over the fact that it's still your mum. And I remember watching these videos of the Trafalgar Square protests, and some of the Met police had, like, backed her into a corner and weren't letting her leave. Some part of me had this instinct to be like, get, get off my mum, you know? And go, just go nuts and like, punch all those police officers and like, why are you touching my mum for? But I knew that rationally that wasn't the right thing to think of because even if she's your mum, there's certain things you can do that are so terrible or so damaging to society that you have to be like, you have to be arrested for it. From what I know about her now, she lives by herself. You know, she doesn't talk to her kids or doesn't have a good relationship with them. She's alienated all her friends and she must just be bloody alone. And I remember that, like, there's a human being in there and I'm supposed to have some attachment to them. And it's really confusing. It's very weird when somebody loses their mind rather than their life. My dad left the UK after my parents split up and in reconnecting with his family and his culture, he relaxed. Conspiracy theories thrive in the mind of someone who is lonely. 
it is possible to unwind yourself from those ideas if you have a sufficient amount of love and support systems around you. My experience with my mum has meant that now my goal with all of this is to find a foolproof method to detox people from conspiracy theories. My dream result would be something like 10 step process to get your crazy uncle back to the Christmas dinner table. What would you say to your mom if she was in the room right now? Nothing. There is no hope of future reconciliation with her. But there is just not the same person there that you grew up with. So I, I don't, there's no one there to rekindle the relationship with.